Now, this is probably my favorite problem. Because, you know, it, 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 it uses the, um, the, the language of plumbers. You know, I like it when, when I get to learn new jargon. This is called the advance, and this is called the offset. And this is called the travel. That is so interesting to me. I don't know why. All right, plumbers use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate pipe lengths. If a pipe is to be offset as shown in the figure, the travel or length of the pipe is calculated using the lengths of the advance and the offset. Find the travel, the diagonal, if the offset is 18.75 inches and the advance is 13.25 inches. So it ends up, this is a very basic um, problem also. All right, we're going to do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 18.75 squared plus 13.25 squared. equals C squared. So here we go, 18.75 squared plus 13.25 squared. That's 527. .125 equals C squared. Now, normally when we solve a problem by uh, the square root property, which is what we're about to do, you take, normally, here's what you would do. You would take the square root of the variable squared and the square root of the number squared, and you would make it plus or minus. But this is a real life situation where we're measuring the length of things in reality. So negative wouldn't make any sense anyway. So we can just let it be positive. Now we're going to find the square root of 527.125. Whoops. Five twenty seven point one two. And there we go. And it says round to the nearest thousandth. That means three decimal places. So if we come over here and we do that, we see that in the fourth decimal place, that two will not cause the nine to round up. So our C. is going to equal 22.959. And why the heck they don't just say 23? Well, I guess you can't, not when you're talking about a real life situation like that. I mean, you start estimating too much and things won't fit together. Okay, any questions about this? Good old A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay. Now, this is interesting. The diagonal of a square, remember that squares are the same size uh, that they have the same length and width. So I am sure that oh, let's see. Woo! 
That's probably about as close as I'm going to get to a square. But that's our square. Okay, now the diagonal we're told. Ugh, stop that. However, I will keep it red. The diagonal is three times the square root of two feet. And they want to know how long the length of a side is because the length of all the sides are all going to be the same because it's a square. So let's see. Um, if we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then we'll have l, well, we'll have l squared plus l squared equals three times the square root of two squared. So we'll have two times L squared. <clears throat> <coughs> because there are two of them. Equals nine times two. The square root of three, up oh, square root of three. Three squared is nine, and the square root of two squared is two. So two L squared equals 18. Divide by two, divide by two. So L squared equals nine. And so because we're dealing with something in real life, we're not going to say plus or minus three. We're just going to say three. We're just going to go for the positive square root of nine, and you hardly ever get something that's not a decimal. Now, this was a little trickier. You had to kind of stop and think right here. What this gives us since it's three times the square root of two, you would have three squared times the square root of two squared. And so that's how you get nine times two. Any questions? Okay, we're kind of building up in difficulty. Now, we have two sides of an isosceles right triangle. Let's see, the, the two equal sides, I'm sorry, the two equal sides of an isosceles right triangle, R of length T. Find a formula for the length of the hypotenuse. Well, let's see. Actually, we just did that problem with real numbers. This is an isosceles right triangle where that side and that side are equal. Iso, isosceles, means the same. Equilateral is where three sides of a triangle are equal. But an isosceles right triangle, two sides are equal. That is, the height and the base are equal. So let's draw that situation. or pretend to. And 
And what we want to try to do is find the length of the hypotenuse. And so they're letting this side be T and this side be T, and they're saying, what is H? Well, we know that T squared, looks like I'm saying negative T squared, T squared plus T squared equals H squared. So here we're going to have t squared plus t squared, that's two t squares, equals h squared. But now we have to come up with a formula for finding the hypotenuse, the slanted side. So we take the square root of both sides. But again, we're dealing with a measurement of length. So we're not going to say plus or minus, which is what you would do if this were just some math problem without any application. So H is going to equal the square root of 2 times the square root of T squared. But the square root of T squared is T. So that's how they get the answer t times the square whoop, times the square root of 2 is that as clear as mud or is it is it okay anybody have questions Gosh, the silence. I think it makes sense. Oh, good, good. Okay, here is, well, let's do this. What we want to, want to do here is, Find all the points on the y-axis of a Cartesian coordinate system. That's our regular graphing grid. That are 13 units from the point 12, 0. Okay. Well, let us do this. Um, I have a bunch of stuff. Math stuff, current, yeah, math stuff, current. Okay, go to templates. And I'm going to get a grid, a graphing grid. There. I like that. OK. You never know. Ooh, OK. Not bad. All right, so we're going to find all the points on the y-axis of a Cartesian coordinate system that are 13 units from the point 12, 0. Let's find the point 12, 0. Right here. Oops. Yeah, 12, 0. OK, and what we need to do is draw diagonals to some point. Now, I know that the points, the answers, right? The answers are 5, 0, uh, 0 5, and 0, negative 5. However, 
I don't know that in advance, do I? So I'm just drawing this picture. We're going to have 12 units here and 13 units here and 13 units here. Well, the 13, is that what it said? 13 units, yes. This is where the right angles are. All right, so this is a leg and this is a leg, but we don't know what it is. I should call it Y, shouldn't I? Yeah, that would make more sense. Certainly not appropriate to call it X. So we're trying to find the Y coordinates on the Y axis that from this point, 12, 0, are 13 units away. Well, OK. So this is normally B, the base. If we just look at this triangle right here, this would be the base and this would be the altitude. And this would be the hypotenuse, which is C. So we're going to take A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Uh, so our A is going to be Y plus B squared, which will be 12 squared, oh, Y squared, plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. And so those are our two of the squares I've memorized. 144, 169. And so y squared, um, yeah, yeah, okay, wait a minute. I'm going to subtract 144 from both sides. And 9 minus 4 is 5, and 16 minus 14 is 2. So we're going to have y squared, and I really ought to keep it the same color. y squared equals 25 and so y. Here we can say plus or minus, which is what we would normally do, because plus or minus five does occur here. This is not going to be way up there at 12. This is going to be the point five on the Y axis, and this is not going to be negative 12. I mean, I was just guessing because I'm not supposed to know. Um, so that would be negative five, and the actual points when writing the answers as points or ordered pairs would be 0, 5 with parentheses and 0, negative 5 without parentheses. Or you could do the problem twice. But there's no reason for that. You do have two triangles though. So you need a point on the positive y-axis and a point on the negative y-axis. Any questions about that?
Well, I would have a question if I were looking at this. Now it looks more like a 12. Nobody's asking any questions, so I'm going to continue. Now this, this is a buster right here. First, even though they have it drawn realistically, it's not the way we're going to draw it. OK. Here we've got, see what it says here. Here we've got, oh, during the summer heat, a two mile bridge expands two feet in length. So here's your bridge and normally it's two miles long. But during the hottest part of summer, materials expand. And so this is going to become two miles and two feet. So the extra length, I mean, it's going to get a bulge, like you can see right there. Now it says, assuming the bulge occurs up the middle, how high is the bulge? I don't know. So let's see. The way we're going to draw this is. This is my hypotenuse. This is my long side, my base side. And that's the height. Well, what does that mean? Um, normally. This would be one mile. And this would be one mile, right? But the whole thing expands two feet. So it's not hard to imagine that that'll be <clears throat> one mile plus one foot on this side. And one mile plus one foot. foot on this side. So that if we draw it so it's a little easier, easier to draw, we would have one mile and one foot And something that we don't know, we don't know how high the bulge is going to go. But we do know that under most circumstances, this side is one mile. I mean, yeah, if, if it weren't the hottest part of summer, that side would be one mile. So now, Here's the pain of it. We have to convert one foot to part of a mile or miles to feet. And it's actually easier to just say, okay, well, one mile is 5,280 feet. That's one heck of a lot of feet. So one mile plus one foot. Is going to be 5,281 feet. So here we go. We've got this triangle. Badly drawn. This is one mile. 
5,280 feet. We've got a height, and this is 5,281 feet. Well, typically the height is A, and the base or the horizontal side is B, and the slanted side across from the right, right angle is C. And we know that we love A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And you know how much I hate big numbers. Yes. Okay, so this is gonna be H squared. And this is gonna be 5,280 squared. <laughs> and this is gonna be 5,281 squared. Okay, fine h squared plus calculator. Yes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There. Okay. <sighs> 5,280 squared that is too painful for words i have a better idea before we do this just to make life a little less painful why don't we subtract 5280 squared from both sides. Which of course will zero out over here and we'll be left with H squared. And over here, letting the calculator do the walking, we'll have a smaller answer. But it's not all that small, is it? Okay, so here's what I did. 5,281 squared minus 5,280 squared. Now, I take the square root of both sides, but I do not say plus or minus because I'm talking about the height of a bridge and I definitely don't want that to be negative because that would mean like it's sagging. That would be really scary. So H is going to equal the square root of that. One, zero, five, six, one. And so here I have this. Now let's see how many decimal places we're supposed to round this to. Uh, type an integer or a decimal, round to the nearest thousandth, that's three decimal places. So here's my answer. Um, 102.766, those are the three decimal places. I look at the fourth decimal place, seven, and this seven will cause the six to round up to a seven. So we agree with their answer. So let's see. Our exact answer is right here. The exact answer doesn't tell you much in real life, but it is exact. Once you throw something into a calculator, 
all you get is an approximation. And what is this, feet? Yeah, feet. Any discussion about this? No, oh, silence. Okay. I have this nasty feeling we're going to get out early today. Yep, this is the last problem. However, I have workers over here working on my poor, sad, but now well, now healed, um, uh, side door. Yeah, side door. I haven't even bothered to look at it in 10 years. I never go in or out of it. Um, and I looked at it, I don't know, a month or two ago, and it was rotting. Well, we're taking care of that. And it's an excuse to clean out my back room. All right, here we go. We have this, well, I'll read it. If a line from the highest point of the pyramid to the center of the base, you can't see the base because it's inside. But anyway, that, that straight line that's perpendicular to the base, that means it's standing up straight like that, is 76 feet long. And each of the legs, each of the legs, that's what they're calling these. Each of the legs is 101, 101 feet. So we have 101 feet and 76 feet. Now what they want to know is what is this distance right here? From, from where this, this perpendicular lands on, on the base of the pyramid out to a corner of the pyramid. So we're trying to find that. So we can call it X. It's, is it 101? Yeah. OK, so this is 101. And so if we were to take it out and show it in uh, just Blackboard style, we would have this 76 foot dealie. We would have the length out to the corner and we would have our 101 foot thing right there. So let's let this be A, and let's let this be B, and that of course is C, there's no choice there. And we'll say A squared plus B squared equals C squared. They're calling that a leg, but yeah, I go, that really bothers me. Nonetheless, mathematicians do have their own names for things, don't they? We're going to have 76 squared plus B squared equals 101 squared. And then I'm going to subtract 76 squared from both sides. That will leave me B squared equals 101 squared minus 76 squared, and I put that in the calculator. Forty-four twenty-five. So B squared 
equals 4425. And the square root will be B equals the square root, second X squared, of 4425. Enter. And I get how many? Round to the tenths place, that's one decimal place. There's one decimal place right there, and the two after it will not cause the five to round up to a six, thank goodness. So our answer is going to be 66.5 feet. Ta-da. Well, that's it for the entertainment. Exam two is now open for retakes. And will stay open until April 30th. Barring a, an asteroid hit or something like that.